what's happening, man? Great weekend to you. This is my weekend vlog. Um, this is something I am going to stay consistent with every weekend, um, at least once a week. A lot going on right now. Of course, summer is over. Um, fall is here. Um, I am, my head is everywhere. I've had some really interesting challenges over the past couple of weeks. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out what to do in life now. I'm trying to figure out, you know, I've, I've had a couple of uh, a couple of wins, a couple of accomplishments. Um, and now I'm like, okay, Dean, what's next? You gotta have a go forward plan. So I wrote the book, I moved, I bought a new house. And something happened where I feel like I'm not moving fast enough. And the reason why I feel like I'm not moving fast enough is because I ran out of resources to do a lot of things that I wanted to do. But let's table that for a minute. I want to talk about technology for a minute. And the reason why I want to talk about technology is because, um, as some of you know and some of you don't know, I've been in IT for 20 years. Um, that is now something else that is on my table that I have to figure out what to do with. So I've been in IT for 20 years, starting to help desk, worked my way up, done a lot of different things in tech, project management, service delivery. I had a direct role at one point. Um, and so now I have been reaching out to a couple of executives because I'm trying to understand where the path needs to go now, what the next step is, the next, the next level. Like what steps do I have to take um, what exactly do I want my IT career to look like? And I had the pleasure of meeting a gentleman last fall who at the time I did not know was a, an executive that had been a CIO in multiple corporations. Two primarily that he spoke with me this, uh, this morning, me and him had breakfast. He agreed to sit down with me for breakfast and we had breakfast uh, and coffee and talked for about two hours. Um, he's a former CIO for two educational institutions, one in California and then one here in Chicago, which I won't name. And his story is really impressive. Where am I? I'm on my way to the gym. <laughs> I'm lost. Oh, I'm going that way. Um, his story is really impressive. Um, right now, he works for a consulting firm and he consults other CIOs. And I mean, I'm talking about the state level, other for-profit organizations, um, and he that's all he does is work with senior leadership. And he was talking to me about the path to executive roles, the path to CIO, and the things that you need to do right now to make that happen. And I thought the conversation was interesting, and I'll just share a couple of different things um, that I got from the conversation. Okay guys, so I'm back in the office and I wanna share a couple of things from this conversation I had with the CIO that I met with over the weekend. Um, had a chance to meet him and had a really great conversation. Really, the real reason why I wanted to meet him is because I wanted to talk to him about what I was doing with my not-for-profit. But that conversation snowballed into us talking about technology. And since I am interested in making some career moves he really, really, really laid it on me. Um, a lot of good nuggets, which I'm gonna have on my blog at dinkandtob.com. But I wanna dive into a couple of them just really, really quickly, just kinda give you guys a little bit of the conversation. So real quick, you know, this gentleman, so just to give you a, uh, his background really, really quickly, he was Chief Information Officer, which is um, the top, almost, well, the top level that you can have um, in a professional corporate organization in terms of uh, the top technology executive. Uh, he was the CIO for two major educational institutions um, that, that he mentioned to me. He was also a CIO for a couple of other different um, organizations, both in California and here in Illinois. And he's had a lot of extensive experience. He went to law school and actually he ended up going to law school because his company sponsored for him to go to law school. He had worked for them uh, for a significant amount of time, really did a lot of great work for, him, work for this organization, and they ended up sending him to law school. And his career just bloomed from there. Um, and one of the things that I, I talk to him about a lot is just kind of my career paths. Now, I've, I've been in this stage now where 
I've been doing this or in the arena for 20 years at different capacities. And 20 years is a long time. And I was asking him, where do you think I can go from here now? And one of the big things that I, I took away from the conversation was, I think it's time for me to reinvent myself. Like, I really, really think it's, it's time for me to act like I'm doing this for the first time again and start to train all over again. So anyway, um, lesson number one, he talked about your resume. Um, your resume should tell the story how what you've done for the organization has made an impact. Sounds simple enough, but a lot of people don't do that. Me and him were talking about my resume and some of the stuff that he saw on there. He started asking me some questions and I'm like, okay, so I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. Um, he's like, well, where are the, the value impact statements is what he said. And I thought that was intriguing. Um, that you should have annotated on your resume, LinkedIn, wherever it is, what you've done. Not only what you've done, but how what you've done has had an impact. Okay, lesson two. Growth only comes through embracing challenges and new opportunities. And no matter how determined you are, how focused you are, how much of a good worker you are, people will still try to sabotage what you're doing. Now, I know about this firsthand like seriously I know I truly understand I overstand if that's a word how people will really just try to sabotage you they'll 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 undercut you um, they'll look over you um, you know you may be in a position to try to uh, influence a particular project or something that you're working on at work and you have people that will just sabotage you. That was one of the things this guy talked about. He was asked uh, by leadership at one particular organization that he was working at to take over a project. What it sounded like to me is that some of his colleagues were either jealous or envious or didn't understand why he was being asked to do it over these other people. And it's, you know, again, it's politics, right? Um, he got the opportunity to do something that they didn't get to do and it was a struggle it was a diff it was difficult for him to do it and he told me later on he would he would go to find out he would come to find out that some of his colleagues actually said that they were going to sabotage him that's a very real thing you know it's a very real thing so you know i just i thought that was profound and he just really decided that he was going to push through it and you know do as great of a job as he could, but he was he was really adamant about pushing through the politics of people. Because you know, when you work in an organization, you have to work with a lot of different people across a lot of different departments, and you're competing for resources, you're competing for time, you have your own goals and your own work initiatives on your own project, but at the same time, other people have their own initiatives, their own priorities, their goals. So it was, a, it was a balancing act, but when he told me, he said that these people told him they were gonna sabotage his project. I mean, that is a recipe for disaster and failure, but he worked through it. Okay, so lesson three is understanding your organization's technology roadmap and mapping those goals to your organization's goals and your work output, or mapping those goals to your manager's goals. So what that means basically is it's a it's a definitive way to to map out success, right? In your particular role or whatever you're doing on your project, right? I mean, what you want to do is you want to know that what you're doing that your work output is matched up with the goals of the organization or more importantly the goals of your manager. Now, having these conversations with your manager, I know for a lot of people can be difficult. But this is something that uh, that is really not talked about a lot. And it's something that when you start to take leadership courses or management courses, this is something that um, you should know, you should learn. For, for people that are like individual contributors, you may not know this, but from a management or leadership perspective, this is very key because you need to understand what that what you're doing maps to your manager's goals, right? Because obviously, you're trying to make your manager look good to a certain extent by ensuring that his goals are met from his manager. I thought that was profound and interesting. That's something that oftentimes we don't consciously think about. And it's a lot of times our own managers, even in my experience, 
a lot of times we don't, I've, you know, in very few instances have I had conversations with a manager that said, these are my goals. This is what I need you to do per my goals. A lot of managers don't even understand this. Okay, lesson number four. Um, this was really interesting. So um, when, I, when I was talking to this gentleman, um, I was expressing to him that I've had some roles in the past where I've had some challenging issues with colleagues and managers, right? We all do. Um, and today, a leadership perspective is to understand the best way to deal with someone who's difficult, particularly your manager. And the one thing that he said to me is he said that anytime that you're in conflict with a manager or any colleague, it's an opportunity for growth. Back in my mind, I'm also thinking to myself, it's an opportunity to exercise leadership. Now, this is very difficult, especially when, you, when you're dealing with somebody who has an ego just like you do. It is a challenge to understand who in that situation can be the bigger person or who in that situation can uh, exercise leadership or turn what may, be, may seem to be a negative situation into a positive. Some of the ways that you can do this is look at the difference or what the differences are and see how you can align with the person's viewpoint and perspective. And I think that's what this guy did a lot, a lot through his career, given that he was at the top multi, in multiple leadership roles many, many times over. I can't imagine how many times he, he's had to argue with somebody or bump heads with somebody. And being in a leadership position, this is very, very key. And this is something that I'm going to learn and something that I'm going to take on for myself. Okay, lesson number five, this is my last, last. this is the last lesson, and I'll put the rest of them up on my blog at dinkatop.com, but he, he talked a lot about markers of success. Now, this is something that we are not necessarily, a lot of us aren't necessarily trained on this. Like, we don't know, you know we, when we get a job or we go into an organization, <clears throat> we interview, and a lot of times, a lot of stuff that I'm talking about now, the people that are interviewing us are not conscious and aware of this. You know, they're not, um thinking about a lot of these things when they hire people sometimes you know you just get hired somebody you just get hired because somebody likes you but success in your career is determined by what you do when you come into an organization you're coming into an organization to fill a need to solve a problem to fill a gap the specific group of words that he used is value impact. What is your value impact? In anything that you do, what is your value to the organization? I've struggled with this plenty and plenty of times. I know that a lot of people have probably struggled with this. In that your value impact is, what is your value to the organization? It's your value anywhere. It's your value at home to your family. What are you doing for the people that are closest to you? You know, what is your value? What? How, how does someone benefit from you being around. Um, and a lot of times we're brought into organizations and we're, we just, we, we fill a kind of menial role, maybe some kind of task that we're doing and it's not that impactful. So one of the goals here is to think about your value impact and think about how you can become more valuable in the marketplace. A lot of people have talked about this and even now, even having been in IT for 20 years, I am now still getting ready to do a lot of continuing education that I have planned in the next year or so because I want to continue to increase my value. I want to continue to increase my level of education. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you today for my weekend vlog. This is short, nothing too eventful, but I did want to share that with you um, from my conversation with this gentleman uh, who's a former CIO. He's uh, currently right now consulted with a very well-known IT consulting firm. Uh, here in the Chicago area. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, my book, Climbing the Corporate Ladder, How I Went From $15 an Hour to Six Figures in Tech, is on Amazon.com. You can find it on Amazon right now. I'll put a link somewhere around this video. In case you haven't seen it, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. <laughs> you get it right now on Amazon.com. Um, check for my blog, my latest blog post. Um, and I'll elaborate a little bit more about my conversation um, with the chief information officer that I met with this weekend on my blog at deancontav.com.